cloudy skies. I think this will be our best shot of making it through most of the day dry. Just isolated brief showers for at least part of the day tomorrow by Friday. We are waking up under mostly cloudy skies for Friday morning and a lot more humidity is in store too. We're not going to see a ton of sun over the next few days. Some breaks of sun in there for at least the end of the work week, but with the uncomfortable humidity, it's feeling more like the triple digits at times throughout Friday afternoon. Friday evening, we're under mainly clear skies. For the rest of tonight, though, we're going to hold on to what's left of the cloud cover as temperatures drop back into the upper 60s. So we're really just going to slide back by a couple degrees at the most. Tomorrow, we'll see the chance of isolated showers. Temperatures will work their way into the lower 80s for your Thursday. Not quite as much humidity for tomorrow. We're still going to feel it at times throughout your Thursday, but definitely for Friday, 91 degrees. Keep in mind with the humidity, it's feeling more like the mid to upper 90s, if not triple digits through Friday and Saturday. 88 degrees on Sunday, so we're still very warm. We're still very humid, too, so it's feeling like the 90s through the end of the weekend. But we are finally going to break down this pattern for the early part of next week, which will take us into the lower 80s on Monday and upper 70s for Tuesday and Wednesday. A lot less humidity, too. So you're going to feel a very clear difference about a week from now, but we have a rough few days ahead of us, yeah, I think. Yeah, just got to get there. Well, thank you, Rachel. More Eyewitness News is on the way after this. Hello, this is also a voice check for me as my voice feels weird, but sports coming up at 11. You're watching Eyewitness News at 11 on WUTR. A travel advisory being issued for motorists in the city of Utica on Monday by the State Department of Transportation. Regarding the construction on Route 5S and Oriskany Street between Cornelia Street and Broad Street, lefts will be permitted from both east and westbound directions at the intersection. We will keep this through uh, probably through the year and why we're able to build the new actually main line on the south side. Uh, once the new alignment's built, then everything will be placed, the traffic will be shifted up onto the new alignment, and then it'll allow us to do the work on the north side of the project. And between 5S and John Street, you are able to make a left coming from the eastbound direction. Governor Andrew Cuomo signing the Farm Workers Bill into law today, establishing the Farm Laborers Fair Labor Practices Act. 
The bill aims to protect farm worker rights and ensure equitable housing and working conditions. That includes granting farm workers overtime pay, a day of rest each week, disability and paid family leave coverage, and in unemployment benefits and other labor protections. But as we reported on last month, not everyone supported it. Some farmers with family businesses of their own say they can't afford to give their employees overtime. Many state farming officials have expressed their disappointment in regards to the legislation, including New York Farm Bureau President David Fisher and President of the Northeast Dairy Producers Association John Greenwood. In addition, a coalition of state farmers and industry groups called Grow New York Farms has already released a statement in response to today's signing pointing to four specific flaws in the bill they would like to see fixed. Among those points are applying a standard wa a wage rate for farm workers who decide to work on the prescribed day of rest, expanding the family farm definition to include close relatives, modifying the composition and timeline of the wage board, and preserving secret balloting for both farm workers and farmers. The bill is currently set to take effect January 1st of 2020. And a milestone for Mohawk Valley Health System in their plans to put a downtown hospital in Utica. Over half of the property owners within the 25-acre footprint have closed on the purchase of their property. 20, in fact, out of 35 property owners have closed. The three most recent properties acquired by MVHS are Turning Point Sport, uh, Church, the Mohawk Medical Equipment, and Norm Seekin buildings, all on Columbia Street. Four property owners say they won't sell. After property acquisition, asbestos abatement can occur if needed. MVHS seeks to break ground in the fourth quarter of this year. When we return, we'll have a look at sports with sports director David Edelstein. David. Coming up in sports, there were many postponed baseball games today for both American Legion Baseball and the Blue Sox. So find out when those games will be made up next. McDonald. Welcome to the live model and take five drawings for Wednesday, July 17th, being observed by KPMG. The lotto numbers to win or share a jackpot of $5.9 million are 36, 59, 34, 7, 4, 19, and bonus number 6. Now for tonight's Take 5 Drawing. Friday's Mega Millions jackpot is $154 million. Tonight's winning Take 5 numbers are 30, 36, 37, 
27 and 3. Thank you for joining us and have a great night. Eyewitness Sports right now. American Legion baseball playoffs are going to have to wait at least one more day. Good evening. I'm David Edelstein. All four New York District 5 playoff games have been postponed to tomorrow. Today's rain made field conditions unplayable. Puddles of water on the dirt and the grass and on the seats and even in the dugouts and that water pouring out into the drain right there made it unplayable. So the 5th District Chairman Mike Michonne says that the games now scheduled for tomorrow are in question as well. A field conditions are still not ready for play. And as of right now, though, here are the times for the games tomorrow. New Hartford plays Smith. Adrian plays Whitestown, both those at 5.15 p.m. And then Cheryl and Moran play at 5.30. Love at Utica at 8. And tonight's Blue Sox at Diamond Dogs game has been postponed as well. The Mohawk Valley field was also deemed unplayable today. Two Blue Sox players were at Murnane Field today, though, having a catch despite the field's condition. Catcher Timothy Mira and infielder Gabe Sherman say they wanted to keep their arms fresh after having yesterday off as well. They also say that after having a league-leading seven Blue Sox players playing in the All-Star game on the road in Saugerties yesterday, the rainout might actually be beneficial. We all want to play, obviously, uh, but I mean, if the weather's not going to cooperate, there's nothing we can really do about that. I mean, the guys that got to travel to the All-Star game, obviously really talented individuals, and there wasn't a day off for them, too. So. And they got back in late last night, so it is nice to allow them, you know, rest, sleep in, uh, and get ready for a big game tomorrow. With sloppy conditions, uh, no one wants to get hurt, and no one wants to have a sloppy game, so it just gives us another day to get in the gym and get some extra work in before we go play a big game. And them getting the chance to rest after getting in so late last night is uh, it's beneficial to them and beneficial to us. Today's game will be made up as part of a doubleheader on Monday, July 22nd. And if you bought tickets to tonight's game, don't worry. According to the Diamond Dogs Twitter account, those tickets will be honored at the doubleheader on Monday as well. And that big game Mira and Sherman are talking about is against Amsterdam tomorrow. The season series between the Blue Sox and Mohawks is split one game apiece. And it's the third and final time these two teams will play each other during the regular season. But it is likely this won't be the last time we hear of these two teams together. Utica and Amsterdam head into tomorrow's matchup, each leading their respective divisions. The Mohawks currently have the best record in the entire league at 26-8. and eight, But it's the Blue Sox who are currently riding an eight-game win streak, which that is best in the league. Game time at Amsterdam tomorrow is 6.45 p.m. And that's all for sports on Eyewitness News at 11. Be sure to check out cnyhomepage.com and click on local sports for your top sports content. I'll be back tomorrow night on Eyewitness News at 6 and 11 on WUTR. There's more Eyewitness News right after the break, so stay friendly and stay tuned.